Okay, session recording. Okay, guys. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Happy New Year again. Um, we will have three revision sessions. During these sessions, I will go through the material we went together. Will also be your chance to pose some questions. We will have a revision session today. Another one. If I remember well on Friday, and another one, let me check. So one now, one on Friday and online, and another one the day before the exam in person. You have all the details about where and how to join the sessions. So very important thing, you will receive the exam paper it will be accompanied by some supplemental material. Specifically, you will have a formula sheet. Now, some people told me that the number of formulas in this uh, reported are relatively um, few, small. The formulas are all those you need to solve the exam. The exam will come with the formula sheet plus compressible flow tables and some diagrams. This is everything you need to solve the questions of the exam. At the exam, you will have both calcula calculation questions and some smaller, more theoretical questions. It is very similar to what you did for the midterm test. I really need you to be able to solve the examples we did together. Sessions has, have been recorded, so please video podcast and have a look at what we did together. I expect you to be able to solve the examples we did together. You will receive this piece of paper too, that is called the bubble sheet. Once you receive it, first type your name, Um, it should be the, the formula sheet should be two pages long and should be on a blackboard. I will check in a while. Just let me finish this. So uh, first, put your name and your student ID. Then this document contains the possibility to reply to two hundred questions. Never mind. Just consider the first thirty questions and fill the circle corresponding to the correct one. That, that's it. Then I will receive these bubble sheets and then I will post-process this. Now, let me look for the formula sheet. Give me one second. Okay, found it. It is on Blackboard and it is this document. There are few formulas, I know. These are the formulas you need. And also it will come with the compressible flow tables, which you already saw during the lab activity and with some diagrams. Uh, that's it. This is everything you need to solve the um, the, the questions uh, at the exam. So 
no worry, no surprises and no worries at all. So let's, um, before going, starting the revision, is there anything you would like to ask regarding the exam? Or any comment about Messi winning the World Cup? Excuse me. Hi. Hello. Um, so I have a question considering the isentropic flow table. So will we be needing to like extrapolate the values? I cannot hear you very well. Could you please type your question? Thank you. And uh, Joseph, you, you don't need manning formula. Are all the questions one answer only? Do you mean if only one answer is correct for question, Eddie? If so, yes. Yes. You can, uh, okay, you typically, you do not need to extrapolate a uh, centropic value from the flow table, but just read this. There are 30 questions. Let me state it clearly again. 30 questions. We will, Elliot, we will mark only the bubble sheet. There is no negative marking, okay? So you can uh, uh, get the full marks or zero. Then, give me one second. 30 questions. Of these 30 questions, we will have, let me check one, one thing. We will have 16 questions. For my part, 14 questions, compressible flows. 15 marks will come from my part, 45 marks for compressible flows. With no negative marking at all. Okay, are you convinced? Any other question regarding the exam? I really need you to fill in a very clear way the bubble sheet. So please state your student ID in a very correct way. Another thing, questions are not uh, equally marked. In the sense, there are more complicated questions waiting more and some simple questions uh, less. Patricia, I, uh, you can use the, um, I suggest you to use the pencil at the beginning and then use the pen to, when you are sure about your question. The range of the marks for each question will vary between one and six. You do not need to remember any particular formula. Please keep in mind that you should be able to solve the uh, exercises, the examples we did together and those we did during the, um, the tutorials. And most of the formulas you need are reported in the uh, formula sheet. Okay, I cannot give you the, the answers for the last MCQ paper because uh, the questions come from a poll and this poll, maybe some question can be in your exam paper, okay?
Alex, 45% is for compressible flows, 55 for my part. When you, your question differs just a bit, a few percentage from the expected one, choose the closest one, but there should be no problem about this. Okay, let me clarify one thing. So for turbulent flows, when we use Manning formulas, when we use the formula and when we use Moody chart, you use Moody chart only if at the exam, I will tell you that you should consider the roughness of the pipe, okay? If I will tell you that you are in, phase, in front of a turbulent flow with a certain Reynolds number, and I will not mention the roughness, or I will say, please ignore the roughness, you will use the formula. Chester, I will mark only the bubble sheet. Wait one second, guys, because you are saying a lot of uh, questions. Let me just reply to some of you. Okay. How do we use Moody chart for a fully turbulent flow? I will show you in during one of these revision sessions how to do it, but we also did together. So please, if you are not sure about this, have a look at the video podcast. So let me reply. Okay, Eddie, open channel flows. Yes, we did something together and something for the tutorials and there will be a mix of both. I will not go through the compressible flow uh, part during these sessions. Please contact uh, Professor Filippone about it. Any other question for the moment? Okay, so let me start to revise the material we went together during my lectures. Okay, the first topic we went together through was dimensional analysis. I have a question here, one second. So, Something you really need to get is the difference between a dimension and a unit. A dimension is a way to measure a physical quantity, while a unit is a way to assign a number to this dimension. So the length is a dimension and you can measure it in meters, kilometers, microns, and so on. There are some popular major primary dimensions. Typically we um, manage mass, length and time. I have another question. So questions will be similar to what we did during the midterm test, okay? And um, question will also be simpler rather than last exam uh, papers. 
if you are able to solve the examples we did together, you are in a very strong position to solve the successful at the exam. Also, if you were successful at the midterm test, there are some extreme, extremely high chances that you'll be successful at the exam too. Now, what? Let me use this graph. This is Moody chart, okay? And I want to use this graph to reply to one of the questions you mentioned before, how to use Moody's chart. So very important, you will use Moody's chart only if at the exam, I will tell you to, that there is the roughness and it, is a cert, it has a certain value, or if in the value, the, I will, only, only in this case, sorry. So what you do, I will tell you which is the Reynolds number, for example, 1 million. And then you will enter with a vertical line in this graph. I will tell you how much the roughness is, for example, 0 0.02, you will enter with a horizontal line where your, um, the two values will intersect the graph. You will read the corresponding value of the friction factor. Something very easy to be done. Here we have an example of non-dimensional approach of when it is useful. For example, if you want to relate the drug coefficient to the Reynolds number, which are both two dimensionless units, dimensionless quantities. The key point when doing dimensional analysis is to use Buckingham working rules. Buckingham working rule tells you that if you have a certain problem with n variables and it contains n primary dimensions, the problem is governed by n minus n dimensionless groups. These groups are called pi groups. Let's see how to build the pi groups. Let's make a practical example. There is a so-called systematical approach to do it, which will follow seven steps. So let's imagine that we want to characterize the drug force acting on a wall of height h, where we have a, um, a coming with a wind which is coming with a certain velocity u. So what do we do? First step, we state our variables. So we have we want to compute the drag force. The flow will come with a certain velocity. It has a certain viscosity, a certain density, and it will impact a wall of height h. So we have five variables. We need to identify input and output of the problem. Specifically, we want to estimate the drag force given the remaining quantities. So the drag force will be the output of the problem. Step number two, we associate to each variable its dimensions. So drag force, mass, length time to the power minus two, velocity, length over time, density, mass, length to the power minus three. The height is just a length and the fluid the dynamic viscosity is a mass divided by a length divided by a time. Step number three, we have three, five variables, three dimensions, five minus three equal to two. We will have two, Pi groups governing the problem. Step number four, we choose the repeating variables. So we will we have two pi groups. So we will have two non-repeating variables and three repeating variables. All our variables are F, rho, U, H, mu.
we need to choose three repeating and two non-repeating. As non-repeating variables, and guys, let me pose a question. Who do you, who do you, which variables do you believe are good candidate for non-repeating variables? Please type in the chat. We need to choose two non-repeating variables. Thank you, guys. You are right. Drug force and viscosity for two reasons. First, we will consider the drug force as a non-repeating variable because the drug force is the output of the problem. Then we have to choose another one among rho, u, h, and mu. We will select as non-repeating variable mu because it is the most complicated. It is the one with the largest number of dimensions. So once we choose our non-repeating variable, fd and mu, we choose our repeating variables, rho, u, and h. You can choose different variables. You might end up with a very similar solution. As a test, feel free to do it. And if you have time, then scan your derivations and I will be able to revise it. So we will have two pi groups, pi one and pi two, step number five. The first group, pi one, what do you do? You copy the first non-repeating variable, fd, and then you multiply fd by rho to the power of a, u to the power b, h to the power c. Second pi group, pi two, you pick the second non-repeating variable, mu, and you multiply by rho to the power alpha, u to the power beta, h to the power gamma. Step six. You substitute into this expression and this expression their corresponding dimension. So Fd is mass length times the power minus two times rho. Rho is ml to the power minus three to the power a. U length divided by time to the power b. The height is length to the power c. You play the same game for the second non-repeating variable, for the second group. So mu mass divided by length divided by time times density to the power alpha, velocity to the power beta, height to the power gamma. Then you solve the simultaneous equation to find the powers. So you go for the first group, pi one, you you have three dimensions, m, l, and t. So for m, here m is to the power one, plus here m is to the power a, plus no m, no m. The sum of the powers should be zero. So you end up with a equal to minus one. You do the same for the length. So the length here is to the power one, here is to the power minus three a, here is to the power b, here is to the power c. So you have one minus three a plus b plus c equal to zero. Time, here is to the power minus two, here to the power minus b. So you end up t minus two minus b equal to zero. You get both all a, b, a, b and c you substitute a b and c in the expression of pi one and you get the first dimensionless group fd divided by rho u power two h power two this is also known as drug coefficient which is a dimensionless group and is the output of the problem pi two you play exactly the same game. So you have the viscosity, 
density, velocity, height. Mass. Here is the power one. Here is the power alpha. One plus alpha equal to zero. Alpha equal to minus one. The length. Here is to the power minus one. Here power minus three alpha. Here to the power beta, gamma. Minus one minus three alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to zero. Time minus one minus beta. You obtain again alpha, beta, gamma. You substitute and you obtain pi two, which is one over the Reynolds number. You found the two dimensionless groups governing the problem. Let me remind you that the drag force is the output of the problem, right? So the dimensionless group corresponding to the um, uh, drag force will be the output of the problem too. So you have the, the drag force, the drag coefficient, this quantity, is a function of the other dimensionless group, that is the Reynolds number. Who is not convinced about what we did now? Are you all convinced? You are welcome to say yes. Okay, so I expect you to be able to solve um, an example like this. Let's move forward. Second part of dimensional analysis. Here we have another example, the example of the rocket. Okay, so you shoot a rocket with a certain velocity and you want to know how far it will go okay so the height of that the rocket will reach is the output of the problem you state your variables height gravity initial velocity and time step number two you state for each variable its dimensions. So the height is a length, gravity is an acceleration, velocity and time. Four, four variables, two dimensions, you have two pi groups. We have to choose repeating and non-repeating variables. So here, H will be for sure an output of the problem, okay? Here you can pick G and V, G and T, or V and T. It's really up to you because the dimensions are all relatively simple. Let's, also, let's consider, for example, G and V. Why I suggest you in this case to use G and V? Because among these four variables, G and D are the one you know for sure. Why? Because gravity acceleration is a constant, 9.81 meter per second power two, and D is the velocity with the one you are shooting the rocket, okay? So you select your repeating variable, and then you do the systematical approach. Pi one, first no repeating variable, H, g to the power a1 v to the power a2 pi 2 t g to the power b1 v to the power b2 you substitute the dimension so, so for pi 1 length acceleration to the power a1 velocity to the power a2 for pi 2 time acceleration to the power b1 velocity to the power b2 Then for phi one, you substitute the dimension and you sum up the power. So the length here is to the power one, here is to the power a one, here to the power a two. One plus a one plus a two equal to zero. 
time e raised to the power minus 2 a1 here minus a2 minus 2 a1 plus a2 equal to 0. So you obtain pi1 as this quantity. Pi2, here there is a typo, you play the same game and you obtain this. So you have a first dimensionless group containing the, the, the height, a second dimensionless group without the height. The height is the unknown of your problem, is the output. So the pi group with the height is a function of the other pi group. That's it. Here we have another example. So you want to, to estimate the pressure loss in a certain pipe. So you have delta P, that is the output of your problem. It is a function of density, velocity, diameter, length, roughness, and viscosity. Step two, write out the dimensions for each variable. So the delta P, rho, U, D, and mu, these are the dimensions. You will all agree. You have seven variables, three dimensions. You will have four phi groups. We have to choose repeating and non repeating variables. We play the same game as usual. And then after a bit of math, we end up with this expression where the pi group with the delta p that is the unknown of your problem is a function of the other pi groups. That's it. A very important thing, we do dimensional analysis for similarity and model test. This is something very important, guys. So you want to build a model in your garage, okay, of a certain car, for example, of, a, of an airplane. In order to ensure that what will happen to the model is representative of what will happen in real life, you have to enforce three similarities. Geometric similarity, meaning that the model must have the same shape of the prototype, all the lengths should be scaled by a same constant factor. Kinematic similarities, velocity, velocities in the model are scaled by a constant factor with respect to the prototype and dynamic similarities, forces are scaled by a constant factor. Please keep in mind geometric, the meaning of geometric, kinematic and dynamic similarities. Then we did, um, we went through some examples. The main goal of these examples are to let you know how why we need the dimensional analysis. Um, the, um, the pi groups of the model should be equal to the pi groups of the prototype. So let's have a look at this example, okay? It transfer in a cooler fan blade. We have a, a prototype with some characteristics, diameter, length, velocity, and so on. We want to build in our room a scaled prototype with the same um, enforcing kinematic dynamic and um, geometric similarity okay we know that the diameter of the prototype is two millimeters the diameter of the model you want to build is 50 millimeters it is working with a certain liquid of density three kilograms over meter to the power three, you will use in your room another liquid of density 100 kilograms meter to the power minus three. And the density of the fluid is different as well. You want to estimate the remaining quantities, which will be the length of the model, which will be the velocity, which will be the rotational speed of the model. So, 
you play the usual game, okay? You estimate the pi groups exactly as you we did together, and then you start filling this table. What you do? You want to compute, for example, the velocity, the flow velocity, which in the full scale model will be 206 meter over second. You want to know which will be the velocity in your in your model. So you take the pi group corresponding to the velocity, which is pi two, and you say that the pi group of the prototype is equal to the pi group of the model. You substitute in this expression all the quantities you know mu, rho, u, d of the prototype, mo, mu, rho, d of the model. You have this equation in just one unknown u model. You solve for u model and you obtain this. This is the velocity of your model. And then you put it here in the table. Then you can do it for the other dimension. For example, the rotational speed, pi three is the pi group associated to the rotational speed. You say that the um, pi three of the prototype is equal to pi three of the model. You have an equation in one unknown omega model, you solve and you have this. And then you fill the table. And then you can play the same game for the left. And then you have adopted the mm, mm, dimensional analysis to build a scaled model in your room. It is very important to stress that the dimensionless groups of your full scale object are equal to the dimensionless groups of the model in your room. This is why you can do, you can apply this procedure. Summing up about dimensional analysis, what you need to, to do is to use Buckingham working rules to state which are the um, repeating and non repeating variables, how select repeating and non repeating variables, how to link a full scale object to a model and how to play with these equations. Regarding dimensional analysis, any question for me? Anything you want to ask? I pick G because it, it, it is an input of the problem. Uh, regarding tutorials, I suggest you to um, type in uh, the discussion board and I will ask the GTA to have a look at this. Thanks. May I move to the next topic? Thank you. Okay. Pipes and pumps. Okay. A very important thing to keep in mind is that when you have the flow in a pipe, you will always 
have energy losses. You will, we will dis, um, divide the energy losses in a pipe into two big families, major and minor losses. Major losses are due to the viscosity. You will never be able to get rid of major losses, okay? Why? Because whatever fluid you will choose, it will always have a certain viscosity. You do not need to memorize the formulas of the capacity coefficient and so on. Now, uh, major losses will always be present in your flow. No way to get rid of this. Minor losses are due to local event in your pipe. We will characterize local event in, in a second. So, The friction factor, major losses are, um, the main goal when dealing with a major loss is to characterize the friction factor, F. We should distinguish if we are in front of a laminar or a turbulent flow. If your flow is laminar, the friction factor, it is computed by 64 divided by Reynolds. If your flow, is turbulent, it is computed by another expression, 0 0.316 Reynolds to the power minus one over four. These two expressions will give you an estimation of the friction factor in a certain pipe due to major losses. Let me see if I can find another formula. Uh, Anik, please have a look at the formula sheet because I believe that the um, friction factors uh, expressions are reported there. Please check and let me know, okay? These, the, um, these two formulas can be adopted if you neglect the roughness of the pipe or if you prefer, if your pipe is very, very, very smooth. However, real pipes are made by real materials, steel, concrete, something else. So, um, um, real pipe um, needs to account for um, the roughness of the, of the material. When the roughness is present, in your um, pipe, you have to use Moody's chart. If the formulas are not reported in the formula sheet, please uh, be aware to remember these formulas. However, they, they are very, very simple. 64 divided by Reynolds, this, and this, that's it. You will all agree that these are extremely trivial. Now, please have a look at this graph. If at the exam, I will tell you that the roughness of the pipe has a certain value and it cannot be neglected, what you do? I will give you the Reynolds number. You will enter with a certain value of the Reynolds number. You will enter with the corresponding value of the roughness. You will find this point and you will read the corresponding value of the friction factor. That's it. Are you convinced about the adoption of the um, Moody's chart. Okay, Elliot, you can use both the formulas 
or the Moody's chart for the smooth line, they should give you very, very similar results. Anyway, I suggest you to use the formula. The roughness, uh, Nilam, the roughness should correspond always to a certain value of the of the pipe. I will not let let me reference. I will not put you in the position that you cannot find the value, uh, a value corresponding to the graph. Okay. So let's have a look at this problem. You have water with a certain density and viscosity flowing through a one centimeter pipe of length one meter. You want to determine the energy loss. So first thing, you compute the Reynolds number, which in this case will be equal to 2000. 2000 is less than 2300, so your flow will be laminar. If your flow is laminar, the friction factor is F equal to 64 divided by Reynolds. This is the friction factor. Then you compute the delta P according to the formula, and that's it. Are you convinced about the adoption of this formula? Let me check if delta P is not given. There should be, actually. Give me one second, I'm checking. Yeah. Okay, Anik, you are right. Delta P is not given, but what is given is the energy loss, H. Right? And H is delta P divided by 2G. So typically, I will not ask you to compute delta P, but I will ask you to compute H. Are you convinced? So do you agree that you don't need the delta P formula, but you need the H formula in case I will ask you to compute the energy loss? Great. Guys, I mentioned no surprises at the exam. And I know that there are a few formulas, but these are those uh, units. Now let's move forward. Is there anything you want to ask about major losses before we move forward? Let's move forward. Minor losses. I have a question, one second. Uh, Tash, please uh, send me the um, one second, guys. So, Tash, please uh, send me the screenshot of this tutorial question uh, by email at the end of this session, and I will uh, reply. Elliot, uh, no, if the flow is larger than 2300, consider it as turbulent. 
Then Chester, two from Anjou. The one, in, ah, Chester, thanks for this question. The one uh, on the course content page. The one in the course content page is the one you will receive at the exam too. So this is what you have to bring about the friction factor. Laminar flow, 64 divided by Reynolds. Turbulent flow, this. If the roughness should be accounted for, Moody diagram. Pressure drop is related to the energy loss. The energy loss is reported in the formula sheet. So we all agree about this. Minor losses. Minor losses are due to local events. Local events changing the topology of the flow. For example, a change in the direction, an obstruction, a variation of cross-sectional area. All these things will create some vortices in your pipe. Vortices will subtract, will eat energy from the system. This is why they will um, create an energy loss. Energy losses due to um, local events can be computed as a certain coefficient k multiplied by v power 2 divided by 2g. Coefficient k are determined experimentally. You do not need to remember all the coefficient k, but please keep in mind that for a short entrance, it is equal to 0 0.5, and for an exit, it is equal to 1. That's it. All the remaining cases, feel free to forget about this. Then the energy loss in a pipe will be the energy loss due to major losses plus the one due to the local events. Let's see this example. We have a pipe of diameter 10 centimeters and length 10 kilometers. It moves water with a certain flow rate, 0 0.1 meter power three over second. We want to, to build a pump which will be able to drive the flow under three characteristics, three um, scenarios. First, smooth pipe without end losses, smooth pipe with end losses, rough pipe with end losses. So, first, smooth pipe without end losses. We know the flow rate, we obtain the velocity and then we compute the Reynolds number. The flow is turbulent. So you can use Moody's chart with the smooth line, or you can use the formula. You will obtain a certain friction factor from the formula. Then with end losses, you have the contribution of the uh, major losses plus inlet and outlet, 0 0.5 and 1. That's it. And rough pipe, you enter with your value of Reynolds number, you enter with your value of the roughness, you read the corresponding friction factor, and then you substitute it here. That's it. Please revise what we did together, but it's something very, very easy to be understood. So we characterize it, major and minor losses. Before I will move to pipe systems. Any question? Okay, let's move forward. 
multiple pipe system. We can have pipe in series and pipe in parallel. Pipes in series. In pipes in series, the flow rate will be constant. I have a question, sorry. Yes, the session has, is uh, recorded and I will upload it at the end. Uh, I will upload it in Blackboard when it comes. Pipes in series, the flow rate will be the same in each pipe. The energy loss of the whole system will be the summation of the three contributions. Pipes in parallel, the flow rate sums up. We did together an example similar to this one, where we have a, um, a pump which has to drive a flow through, through, um, through two pipes in uh, parallel. I expect you to be able to solve that example, okay? Let me try to draw something. Uh, Fidel, you do not need the iterative procedure. Okay. One second guys, and I will draw an example for you. Okay, I believe that you can see this whiteboard. So, can you hear me, guys? Okay, thank you. We have a pump which has to drive the flow in a system composed of two pipes, A and B. Okay, so I will give you the characteristics of A and B. I will give you the length, LA, diameter, friction factor for B length, diameter, and friction factor. 
the pump as a certain characteristic equations. For example, H pump equal to, just let me guess, 40 minus 160 Q power two. We want to determine the flow rate Q. Okay, so what we did together, we have a parallel system. We compute the energy loss F H in the pipe A through the formula you have in the formula sheet. Since the system is a parallel system, H A will be equal to the energy loss in pipe B. And if you remember well what we did during last time, we end up by writing that QB is square root of LA divided LB times QA. But Q is QA plus QB. If you prefer is one plus square root of L A divided L B Q A. So let me delete something. The pump has to fight against pipe A and pipe B, right? So delta H of the pump will be equal to H A plus H B, or if you prefer, will be equal to two times H A, because H A is equal to H B. H pump, you have it because it's a um, output of the problem. It's an input of the problem, sorry. H A will be computed from the form. Uh, sorry, I think the audio cut out. Now you can hear me? Okay. These tools. 
Anyway, you were able to hear me during the drawing. No, mostly yes, half only. Okay. Uh, what I meant is we did together the example of the um, pipe drive, drive of the pump, sorry, driving the flow in a system composed of two pipes in parallel. Okay. I expect you to be able to replicate that example exactly as we did together. So what you do, you compute the energy loss in pipe A through the formula given in the formula sheet, okay? Then you compute, you obtain a way to write QB as a function of QA. The pump has to fight against pipe A and pipe B, but the energy loss in pipe B is equal to the energy loss in pipe A. So the um, delta H of the pump will be equal to two times H A. From this, you obtain a way to get Q A and then the flow rate. Um, please go through the recording of that part. And I will also um, redo these examples in the next revision session. So next revision session, I will skip the dimensional analysis and I will start immediately with this example. Okay, please always keep in mind that when you have a pump, the pump has to fight against all the possible sources of energy loss in your system. So if the pump is connected to two pipes, you will have energy losses in both the pipes. The pump has to fight against both. But if the pump is located here and you have to drive flow at higher level, the pump has to fight against the energy loss in the pipe connecting the two plus the elevation, plus the difference in the height of the two points. And we also neglected minor losses, but in case you so have to account for K inlet and K outlet. Let me check if there is any relevant thing I want to add now. Next time I will also go through the um, open channel flows. Okay, I will redo these examples and go through the open channel flow part. Uh, anything you want to ask me now, we still have time. Is there anything you want me to go back? Okay, let me reply to these questions. So, Elliot, um, some questions are split. Okay, so not all the questions are disconnected. Um, Oli, I really suggest you to build on three things. First, ask yourself where I am, um, was I able to solve the midterm test? If you were able to solve the midterm test, you are in a very strong position to be successful at the exam. Please go through the video podcast of my lectures 
I stressed some very, very important points during each lecture. Please uh, go through this. Tutorials. Um, tutorials are important too. So I also expect you to be able to solve the examples we did, you did with uh, GTAs. If you have any particular point, problem with something we did at the, during the lectures, email me. If you have some particular problem with something related to the tutorials, put it in the discussion board. Bavar, the, the compressible flow will be the 45% of the final exam. The 55 will be my part. Mohamed, you ask me to go through the similarity again. More than happy to do it. Give me just one second. Okay, this is something very important. So you have a full scale prototype and a model you want to build in your room. In order to ensure that what happens in your room is representative of what will happen in a real life situation, you have to enforce three similarities. First one, geometric similarity. All the lengths in your the model in your room should be scaled by a certain constant factor with respect to what is happening in real life. Kinematic similarities, all the velocities are scaled by a certain constant factor. Dynamic similarities, all the forces are scaled by a, con a given constant factor. This is the similarity. Then you have to ensure that Mm, dimensionless groups in real life are equal to dimensionless groups in your room. And that's it. Are you satisfied, Mohamed? Then, the equation for energy for pump equation is the sum of the elevation of energy loss. Okay, so Mohamed, thanks for your question. When you have a pump which wants to drive a flow, the pump has to fight against the energy loss in the pipe and the difference in the elevation. If the pump and the pipe are more or less at the same height, the difference in the elevation is zero, so as to fight against only the energy losses, okay? For sure, it will have to fight against the major losses due to friction. And if it is specified, the pump has to fight also against minor losses. Are you convinced? Thank you. Uh, turbine will not be uh, considered at the exam, but the working principle is the same. More than welcome. Any other question, guys? I don't want to give, go through the open channel flow now because I don't want to give you um, Mm, a, a large amount of infor information now. Qu keep in mind that we will have other two revision sessions. One will be in person, and I'm more than happy to meet you and reply to your question. Regarding the pump, the only part, mm, let me go through it. Thanks for the question.
Regarding the pump, let me share the screen. The very important thing, as I already said, is this one, that the pump has to fight against the energy losses of the system. So the pump has to fight against major losses due to friction, minor losses due to local event, and the difference in the elevation. This is the total energy loss in a pipe, which has to be um, overcome by the energy increase given by the pump. Okay, so this is the most important thing you need. At least the concept, not the formula, because you draw most of the formulas from the formula sheet. Okay, Syed? Any other question? Guys, I'm here to help you. You know, when, if, at the end of the story, if, you, if I can help you to have one mark more, I'm more than happy to, to do it. If you have, and any more question, I will stop this session now. I will mm, wait for the other session. I will upload this in Blackboard in a few minutes. Anything else you need, you know where you can find me. Thank you very much.